Welcome to Richmond Raceway for the Craftsman Truck Series practice. As you can see, Tropical Storm Debbie, she's moved on out. Blue skies and a lot of heat left behind. Well, I don't know about you, but we're excited to get back to action because it's been a while since this race at IRP. Just three weeks ago, the night belonged to Ty Majeski, but it wasn't easy for him to drive to Victory Lane. Yeah, the nine of Grand Infanter was the control truck. Ty Majeski was deemed to have jumped the restart, had to come through, make a pass through penalty. But then, wow, Phil, <laughs> did he ever drive through the field? What a show Ty Majeski put on getting this victory at IRP. Great being at IRP, such an exciting little racetrack. A lot of fun, uh, seems like about a month ago, right? <laughs> Never disappoints there, but great night for him. He's one of those drivers we talked about all year. He just hasn't gotten it done. They've been consistent, had great finishes. Still waiting on that win. Thor Sport hadn't won a race, so we knocked those boxes off. They're done, and Ty Majeski moving on to the playoffs as if there was any doubt, right? We're excited to have you joining us on this Saturday afternoon. Jamie Little, Phil Parsons, Michael Waltrip. So, Mikey, what's the agenda here for practice and qualifying? And Jamie, I'm so glad you asked because it's interesting. The <laughs> sun is shining. It's over 90 degrees. The track tips are probably north of or south of. I get those confused. 120 some degrees. That's hot is what I'm saying. When we go racing tonight, throw the checkered flag. The only thing shining is going to be the moon and the track temperature will be down. But what are these crew chiefs? How will they go about this practice session? They have simulation. They've done so much prepping for this race. They know what their setup is. They feel like they know the direction it needs to go in in order to be good tonight. So uh, a lot of guesswork, but it's all based on science. And so this is interesting to me to see who adapts best to these changing conditions. Yeah, and there's so much on the line who this is our final race of the regular season. It's been so long since February. These guys are all fighting to get into playoffs. This is our playoff bubble right now. You see Taylor Gray. He's an eight. He's 48 points above the cut line. More than likely will lock in, maybe even after the first stage. But that's when it gets interesting. Ben Rhodes, 22 above the cut line. Tanner Gray, only five points above the cut line. That's the closest cut line we've had and since we've been doing the playoffs since 2016, you see Daniel Dye was above the cut line before IRP, had a, had a pit road penalty, actually had a loose wheel, had to come back down pit road, lost a few points, but only five points below the cut line. He's been on a bit of a heater lately, and Stuart Friesen certainly has a shot as well, only 16 points below the cut line. And again, remember, the other guys can win too and jump up above that cut line. A team can technically get in with a win, but it's all coming down to tonight, the end of the regular season. Practice will begin after this. Welcome back to Richmond Raceway, where Craftsman Truck Series practice has just begun. 20 minutes for these truckers to dial in those trucks. We'll make the quick swap over, and we'll have qualifying coming up. Single truck, two laps around this three quarters of a mile racetrack. Happy to be back at Richmond. Love this place, love this track, the way that it races. Another short track. We've got a lot of them this year in this series. Yeah, and that guy loves it. The guy we were watching, Ty Majeski, dominated the race last year. A little bit of pit strategy went awry, and he didn't get to Victor Lane. He finished second, but uh, I think everybody in the garage probably circles this number and says he's probably our favorite. You can see his Thorsport teammate there, Ben Rhodes, is fastest in this session, so the Fords have got it going on. See them stocked up right at the front there. So good sign early in this session. I mentioned earlier all the changes this track will go through. But, Phil, when you're on those new tires, you just want that balance where you can hammer it. You know, you got to have the front sticking, the back up underneath you. And if you can have that kind of pace early, then it gives you confidence that it will hang on as you run out through these uh, these laps in this session. There's Daniel Dye. For more on him, let's say hello to Amanda Music. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Jamie. I'm so curious of what's going on in the mind of that 43 driver right now. It's Daniel Dye. I was talking to him ahead of this practice session, and he said, you know that feeling that you have on Christmas morning? Well, this is the exact opposite. I am so nervous right now. So when we talk about the bubble and what these playoffs mean to these drivers, that 177 days to this point of the season, that is what's flowing through the mind of Daniel Dye. As team owners swung by here as well and said, Daniel, this is the 39th time that you will qualify in a NASCAR truck. You know what you're doing, bud. He does that, but uh, I'll tell you guys, 
that report she gave is absolutely accurate. I texted with Daniel <laughs> earlier in the week, and he said, I'm nervous, Mike. I said, Daniel, only few race car drivers can do what you did at Nashville. Go out there and be a factor. Try to win a race. Be that close to the front. He was right on the heels of Christian Eckes. Couldn't quite do anything with Eckes. So dominant, but that was a great performance. I said, just do that again tonight, and you'll be fine. And what been so much better this year. I mean, really came into his own this year. Moved over to Mackinac Hilgeman Racing. Has been solid. His average start has been so much better than it was last year. His average finish so much better. Let's take a look at the at the graphic that shows those numbers. Look at his average start is was, was like six positions ahead of where he was last year. And you see his average finish five positions, and that's huge when you get up in near the top 15. And he's at 11 in points, just those five you talked about in our opening deal from being able to qualify to race for a NASCAR championship. This. That's just so fun for me to say. Tonight, we're going to have 10 guys that are going to go racing for a championship in NASCAR, one of NASCAR's top levels of racing. We can guarantee he's not the only driver with some nerves. So oh, yeah. you said it, Michael, they're going to be racing their hearts out to make it because this is what it's all about, to have a chance to win that championship and hoist that trophy at Phoenix. It's one man that knows what it's like to hoist a trophy. Grant Enfinger still looking for his first win this year, but new team for him start the year they've really started to gel clicking off some good finishes locked in moving on yeah they turned it on about six seven races ago and just piling up the good finishes a couple rough couple runner-up finishes in a row for grand and bigger and had hit has him locked in to the playoffs grand and finger the only former yeah. winner here in the field i think we said the same thing last year so he's got that he knows how to get it done around this place under the lights you can see fast truck too up in the top five with speed now we're going to start turning our attention field to these longer runs. Who's able to hang on to that long run speed? So far, the 99 of Ben Rhodes is the fastest after five laps, but creeping ahead of him in the 10 lap run is that nine truck of Grant Enfinger. So that's good. Speed. That's a good sign for that team. Without a doubt. And there's a lot of fall off too for, uh, for these tires on this racetrack. Over a second already in just six laps for some of the guys. Look who's back in the seven truck. You've already heard his name a lot this year throughout different racing series, but it's only his second truck start. Connor Zilich back in the fold. So I know this is a big moment for him. He has uh, four more truck races planned. He has four Xfinity races coming up. And last week made the announcement full time next year for Junior Motorsports in the 88. So this young man, I mean, he's all the talk, all the rage. And now he's locked himself in for next year full time. Yeah, you talk about uh, all the accolades he has from this year. Well, he won a Cars Tour race. And this young man right here, Connor Hall, is the point leader in the Cars Tour. He's our weekly series national champion from 2023, making his debut here for, again for Macanella Hillman Racing. Great short track racer. Should be fun for him tonight. Yeah, Virginia native too. So I know it feels good to make your inaugural start here on this uh, world famous short track in Virginia. What an opportunity to step into this program, know what kind of trucks you have, and the teammates that you can rely on and lean on for this. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, he couldn't be positioned any better for his debut than he is right here. Can't imagine making your debut at a place like this. Of all places, there's so much on the line, so many different agendas for him. He just wants to have a solid run, show that he can do it, and hopefully land himself some more truck rides. Good speed early in this session for Stuart Friesen. He's up in the sixth place, as you see on our pylon, left of your screen. Yeah, well, he's one of those drivers we talked about at the top of the show. So much on the line. Comes in there just about 16 points below that bubble. He's one of the trucks, Phil, that started this session and had it hammered down all the way till just now. He ran 16 laps. That's the most so far. Grant Enfinger now at 17. So that means they like the balance. They had good speed. They liked the way the truck felt in the long run. And how about these two? They've, they've had a lot of fun together this year, haven't they? Up yeah, in I, th I think we're going to continue to see them together tonight and the rest of this season. And uh, it didn't go so well at IRP when they got together. Jake Garcia, the 13, who had a great run, top five finish here last year, right behind them. This is what went on last uh Last time out at IRP, you see a little bit of contact right there. And that caused a left front flat on the 11 of Heim, and he was not too pleased with Christian Eckes. Tight racing on the short track. I didn't really see much, but uh, these guys have got to work it out. They know they're know they both favorites to win this championship. 
Sam just said he wanted some common courtesy. Don't race them that hard and, and you know, push each other like they did. And, and Christian said, hey, I would have been just as mad. I would have said the same thing. I'm sure they haven't talked, but they're they're fierce competitors. And, and personally, I think it's great to watch these two young men and what they've done. They can't be friends when they're competing for yeah. a championship. And how they handled it after the race, too. Corey, how they had a conversation. It was, uh, it was, it was just fine. Raja Carruth talking about the truck. There's Matt Crafton. Stay with us from Richmond. Just under eight minutes remaining in this practice session, and the caution is out for the 20 truck of Jerry Bowman making his truck series debut. And he's having trouble, but he found that reverse gear. Let's take a look at what happened. This is coming off turn four. So you see him just a little bit loose right in front. It looks like Eckes maybe right in front of Eckes. Possibly does a nice job keeping that truck from backing up the hill towards the outside wall. He's been on the struggle bus. He uh, is the slowest truck on the track, about a second off the pace of the last. Got next to last. Here you see Daniel Dye coming into the scene, getting us some good shots. A resident cameraman, always on the spot. There goes Jerry. See, no contact, so he should be able to put some more tires on that 20 truck for Tyler Young and go again. Got to appreciate Tyler Young. He's always giving people chances. He's working hard to make mm -hmm. his team better each week. I just really like his spirit and what he does. A little bit of brake duck debris on the racetrack. Get that picked up. I know this isn't what the... The truckers that are struggling mightily right now, they don't want to see this because all you have is 20 minutes. A lot of them might be done, Jamie. You know, you run that straight through. So I see as many as 27 laps on the board. See what uh, Christian Eckes is thinking about his truck and what's going on so far. I don't feel for very good. It just doesn't turn like the front is dead in the middle of the corner. How about your entry? Do you feel like you're free entry there at all or are you okay on entry? Um, I'm a little free in, but that's got nothing to do with the terrible tight in the center. Well, that's not a great sign, but we all know how intense Christian Eckes is when it comes to breaking down that truck. Uh, I remember in Nashville, we were really surprised about how positive he was. <laughs> you know, usually he's like, I don't like my truck too well, and he goes out. And well, then it showed what happened yeah, that, that night. Led every lap in dominating fashion. So you got to listen to the young man. Obviously, he's very in tune with what he's doing, understands his truck perfectly, and he just wants Charles and Ike and that team to know, I'm going to need some adjustments before we go racing tonight. Christian Eckes fifth on the board now as he is done for this practice session. We'll finish up practice and switch over to qualifying next. Welcome back to Richmond Raceway as Crossman Truck Series practice continues. Ben Rhodes fastest so far after 23 laps, fastest on the five lap average as well. Ty Majeski, the man that won at IRP our last race out, he is second fastest. The fastest in the 15 lap. Average is Majeski, and that gets everybody's attention, knowing how good he was at IRP, how fast he was here a year ago. Probably going to be your odds-on favorite, Phil, for me. Yeah, I think without a doubt. 98 truck. Get a good look at Sanchez there, followed by Zillich in the seven. See, Sanchez is struggling a little bit. He's only 33rd fastest right now, but on his 27th lap, he just ran a 25-25, when we were watching before, some of the better trucks towards the top of the board were running about 25 flat after 23, 24 laps. So yeah. he's not as far off as it looks down in 33rd. You know, he may have gotten uh, on his new tires. He may have gotten some traffic and not been able to put a good lap down. So I don't think it's quite as bad as maybe as it seems. But uh, I'm, I'm sure he's probably a little bit anxious about it. Let's hear from the regular season point leader, Christian Eckes, Amanda. Christian, we always appreciate your ability to be frank. Just before the commercial break, Michael was talking about the positivity that you found in your truck in Nashville. Where are you on your truck's happiness meter right now? I can't really hear you, but I don't think we're very good. Um, the instant coach Chevy was just a little bit tight everywhere and uh, made it snappy free on exit and just, just wasn't very good. So uh, we're going to go to work here. Um, I don't know. We'll see, but just looking forward to tonight. Michael, I think that's kind of low on the happiness meter, bud. Well,
I'm not surprised. We uh, we we did a little math while we were at break, and uh, it's about a tenth and a half of a second at the end of his run off of what Majeski was able to put on the board. So a tenth and a half a lap that adds up in a hurry on a short track, and he's uh, he certainly has the reason. I think that the the lap times, the science backs up his concern. And when you uh, have the history he has of being able to break down a truck like Christian Eckes can to his crew chief and his team, that just means they're going to make adjustments, and they'll make that truck better. And that's the thing about these guys. They're obviously practicing in the heat of the day. It's probably 90 degrees there. It's going to certainly be cooler tonight when they run. And this racetrack will change dramatically. And those crew chiefs and engineers, they've already factored that in. This is the same tire. It's a mature tire, same tire that they've run at this racetrack before, as well as other times this year. So... They, they, they know how to adjust for it for the conditions, but I certainly would rather be where Majeski is and the adjustments I have to make for tonight than maybe where Eckes is and not real happy about his truck. I bet you if we ask Majeski, he's going to say everything's okay right now over here with the 98. I would hope he would say that. <laughs> Curious what Matt Crafton in the 88 feels about his truck right now. I mean, we've talked about it. We've been documenting it. it hasn't been the season that he had hoped for. That an issue saw a wiggle there for Tanner. No, I think he was just trying to check out his pit road entry, see if he could get that thing down to, you know, it's a little bit of a difficult entry there into the pits off turn three and four there. And uh, you want to get that truck stopped the best you can up on the banking and then duck down. And that's what I think he was simulating. There's the box that they have to clear. You don't clear that box and you wind up with a penalty. Those are pretty circles still. Yeah. Get it done while you can in practice, right, Michael? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where those other circles came from. Oh, we've, we've, <laughs> here we go. See, he's running down in there hard. You know we're going to have, you know, we've had green flag pit stops here in the past. And, and I could tell you that that's just really difficult. We see them running, uh, you know, 130, 40 miles an hour and then getting down to nothing, basically 30, 40 miles an hour on those old slick tires. Woo. That's a challenge. Remember, Ben Rhodes had a great truck, was racing up in the top five last last year here at this racetrack. And he, he made his pit stop, and he got his right rear tire, touched that orange box on his green flag pit stop, and that resulted in a penalty and put him back outside the top ten in the finishing order. It's a good look at William Sawalich. Incredible year he's had so far in the Arkham and Art series. I mean, every time out, we're talking about him, Phil. He's up at the front of the field. How about that finish last week at Elko, Minnesota? William was dominating the race and then gets turned around by Michael Maples into the lot of damage to the left rear. Now here he is racing with Isabella Robusto, Chris Wright. He had a lot of, had to find his way back up towards the front. And this is coming off the corner on the last lap. That's Lamar Scott in the middle, Chris Wright on the inside. Look how close it was. Look at that finish just on the outside. Wins by an inch. And what we didn't see is the lightning strike with those three cars side by side. It was just unbelievable at his home track, too. Yeah, that was big. He, uh, he's been outstanding, outstanding in the Arkham Menard Series this year, but as he was last year as well. What a talented young racer he is. I did a little preview for this weekend on my Instagram thing, and I said, William Swalich, Connor Zilich, I mean, you take... Christian Eckes, Corey Heim, you got the beginners that are going to be mixing it up, the veterans that are going to be. We've got so many fun things going on here in Richmond. There's the fastest cat in town. Yeah, he is. Ben Rhodes got to be happy with that race truck. They'll make the switch over. Qualifying coming up next. Welcome back to Richmond Raceway. See everybody feverishly working, getting those trucks ready for qualifying. Well, it was a good practice session. You look at the top three, Thor Sport looking strong. Any surprises to you gentlemen? Well, look at the surprise that Thor Sport, remember the first, you mentioned the first win for Ford and for Thor Sport at IRP just uh, last time out, but uh, strong here early on. But of course they were strong here last year, so it probably shouldn't be a surprise, should it? I think there's some surprises and guys that are missing from that top 10 for me. Corey Himes outside of the top 20 even. It'll be interesting to see adjustments and how they go qualify here in a bit. Jake Garcia with a great practice effort. Third on the board, Amanda. Yeah, Jamie, and he doesn't feel that it's a surprise at all based on his results here last year with that P4 finish. And he told me off camera that he is racing win or bust tonight. So how can you apply that type of mentality here to qualify? Yeah, you know, um, I think we're qualifying, we're going to need to lay down a good lap because track position is important here. Um, that being said, it's also a long race, so um, it be important tonight to take care of your stuff and uh, be there at the end um, if you do want to win. Even though it's winter bust and that sounds really aggressive, I do think a conservative approach is, 
is the thing to do for for a good run tonight. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Well, Michael, you mentioned some of those missing. I mean, we talked about Connor Zillich and the speed he's had, although it is his second time out. He's down there 31st on the board. A couple others, Corey Heim, 23rd. Even you mentioned Phil, Nick Sanchez, 33rd. Can't be happy with what's happening right now. No, and, and you know, Nick Sanchez and Zillich's trucks all come out of the same shop, Spire Motorsports, obviously. They have a relationship with Rev Racing, who fields the truck for Nick Sanchez, and both of those trucks down there. Raja Karuth is the other truck out of that shop, and Raja is back in 25th spot. So maybe you know, it could have been a philosophy. Maybe their setup didn't quite agree with uh, with the with what was going on here at Richmond. And sometimes, even though they may have run well last year, well, your your setups change over the course of time, over the course of the year, and you go towards a, a different direction. And maybe that's something that may. Uh, you know, it may be biting him here. You never know. There's going to, I talked to in the opening when Jamie asked what I expected. I think we expected there would be some, a bit of confusion about what setups would work and how the, the teams would adjust. And I think we are backed up by the lap times <laughs> seeing some of the guys that aren't up front. So qualifying could, uh, after these adjustments, you can see how hard these teams are working on this trucks. Qu qualifying will continue to be a process that I think will become more clear exactly where these teams stand stacked up against each other. Adjustments underway. Ball fine coming up next. Trey Hutchins will lead the field. Stay with us. Tonight, it's baseball night in America on Fox as rising star Gunnar Henderson leads the Orioles against the Rays. Or it's a north side, south side rivalry between the Cubs and the White Sox. It all begins tonight at 7 Eastern on Fox. Check for the game in your area. What about the big news out of Bristol? Big news. Baseball. Yesterday. Baseball. I, I just told you guys, I've talked more baseball in the last 24 <laughs> hours than I have my whole life. I cannot wait to go to Bristol and watch the Braves That's play, man. Be so I've been a fun. lifelong Braves fan. I love, I love that organization. And, man, Marcus Smith, uh, Jerry Caldwell, that whole SM team, they just do such a great job of being innovative, thinking outside yes. the box, and bringing fun to NASCAR. Yeah. And uh, baseball and NASCAR, that's awesome. How many people will we have at that baseball game? What What do you think, 75,000 maybe? No, oh, it's going to be more than that. Ooh. I bet you it's going to be over 100,000. That's awesome. They know it's going to be a, 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 a big outpouring because people are talking about it. And you mentioned it, Michael. They're going to build – a diamond. We were standing in the middle of where it's going to be yesterday, and the Cincinnati Reds are playing the Braves, and they had some of the stars from them out. Chase Elliott, lifelong Braves fan, he was out there, got to drive one of the cars around, and just the buzz is real big for just thinking outside the box, and you know, everybody that's involved with it, this is something we haven't seen before. So yes, it's exciting, and uh, we have lots of baseball on Fox. That game next year, August 2nd, 2025, will be on Fox. So exciting things happening, and exciting things happening for Ben Rhodes. Fastest in practice, Amanda. Yeah, Jamie, we were just talking about the baseball game as well, and he was laughing. He said, I have been so consumed with these playoffs, but you just told me you can't let your eyes get bigger than your stomach. You were fastest in practice, but what does that sentence mean? Yeah, I mean, a good run right out of the gate for our Nashville Stampede F-150, but uh, what that means is that we're competing for both driver's points and owner's points tonight. We're below the cut in owner's points. We're above the cut by 22 points for the driver's points section. So we can't let our eyes get bigger than our stomach. We need to play it safe for the driver's side, but we also need to go get it and, and would like to ultimately win the race to lock us in for both owners and drivers. But really, you can't lose everything for the sake of one thing. We've got to play it smart and just know that we've got a good fast F-150 and, you know, hopefully qualifying will go good here because nobody wants to go on a rampage to the front. Sounds like no pressure for Ben Rose tonight, guys. I'm trying to figure out what, what he's deciding to do, Amanda. Does he go for it or does he dial it back just a little bit to take care of things? But all in all, it sounds like uh, he has a fast truck, has that new sponsor, so a lot to look forward to. As Trey Hutchins got awfully close to the wall there for our, our first trucker. Oh! And he goes sideways and he saves it. That's commitment right there. That's what the drivers, these kids nowadays call full send. He was in full send mode, just a little bit more gas to the back tires than they can handle. Can he rail it back in on this lap? and keep it under control, get a better lap down. Yeah, fortunately, that was on the back stretch, so he was able to get back up to speed by the time he got to the start-finish line because this is a short track. They will get two laps for qualifying. Most of the time, we only see them get one lap on most of the bigger tracks. 
Trey Hutchinson. Hutchins has four short track starts. Best finish is 16th at Iowa back in 2017. So not a lot of experience. Let's take a look here again at what happened. Well, first of all, we're going to scare that outside wall, but that's kind of normal, you know, for he just wanted to get that arc into the corner. A little yeah. loose getting in the corner, yeah. too, didn't he? A little aggressive on both those entry and exit. He calmed down and picked it up about a half a second on lap two. So see how that stacks up as we roll through this field of truckers. Yeah, Trey is uh, it, it comes in here with the least amount of points of anybody. So he will definitely have to make the top 31 on speed in order to race tonight. He takes back a clean truck back to the garage. So next up, Justin Carroll finished 31st at Richmond last year in his only start here. Virginia native from Williamsburg. He was able to run a little bit quicker than Trey Hutchins. Again, same situation though for Justin Carroll. Actually, if Trey Hutchins, the fact that Justin Carroll ran faster than Trey Hutchins, I think that would probably mean that Justin Carroll will make the race because Trey Hutchins is, is the lowest end points coming in and he knows that he's ahead of Trey Hutchins. So we have 37 truckers for 36 spots, so the one truck will go home. Jerry Bowman saw him have a little incident in practice, but again, he kept it off the wall. Truck looks nice and clean, making his truck series debut today. That was a wide exit to that corner, sort of missed the entry. I heard him gas it up a little bit once he let off because he knew he didn't get in deep enough, but just not able to hold the truck down where it belongs. You don't want to be up there messing around. We'll see them up there messing around tonight when we're racing, <laughs> but not There'll be somebody the underneath them as well. The, the preferred line here at this racetrack is just left front, right on that yellow line. Even under it in three and four, I think you'll see. Um, that's where the grip, most grip is, and, and there's very little of it there, even. Jerry's track. Uh-oh. Oh. Sideways. And he saves it again. So caution is out now for the 20 of Jerry Bowman. Turned 54 years old last week. Jerry had two opportunities to make contact with a wall and he didn't do it, so. A for effort there, Absolutely. saving it. Absolutely. But learning as he goes. As Michael said, he just couldn't keep it on the bottom. It looked like he tried to turn down to the bottom and the back end just wouldn't do it, Michael. Bowl for life, that was a slide for life for Bowman. But he was able to gas it up right here. Nice job there. And that kept that truck from backing into the safer barrier. Nice job. If he locks the brakes up, that truck backs into the outside retaining wall and safer barrier. Let's hear from Stuart Friesen, Amanda. Hey, Jamie, yeah, we were just talking about the point situation, and Wally said that that's all that's on his mind right now. Tonight, when that helmet goes on, you just race. When you think of racing at Richmond, you did say that you race smart, but what wins here? Uh, yeah, just, just being smart, taking care of your stuff, and, and uh, tires are your best friends, right? So thanks to everybody at Helmar and, and, and Toyota and all our great, uh, great product sponsors. Um, We'll just do our best. We had a, had a pretty good practice there, better than we've had in years past here by, by a long shot. So that's just a testament to everybody uh, working hard at the shop and, and, you know, just getting better as a group. So uh, big thanks to everybody that's, that's pulling for us, all our Northeast Mod fans, and um, we'll just do our best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. 21 and Mason Maggio on the track now. It slowed down for some reason. Not sure exactly what the... I, I think he, he was on the racetrack when Jerry Bowman spawned. So I think that NASCAR wanted him to come back to pit road. And then I think they were going to let him cool his truck back off and maybe send Stefan in the 75 pop sells truck out. But I think Mason decided to go out on his own anyway. And I think NASCAR probably said, hey, hey, come back to pit road because he certainly backed off when he got to the start finish line. Huh. That's interesting. Sometimes it seems like communication should be a little clearer, but it's not that easy when you have a guy that's on the track. A guy spins out, you know, and you have to re-rack there a bit. So no time for Mason Maggio as Stefan Parsons takes to the track. Stefan was down there in practice. I, we heard that maybe an engine issue. Yeah, he was. Uh, he went out and ran one lap, and it was 270 degrees. So I think they're fighting an a overheating issue. They may have to change engines. I guess they felt like there wasn't enough time to change engines for qualifying. So they went ahead and decided to go ahead and qualify. Looks like he's going to easily be able to beat the trucks that have been on the racetrack, but they may uh, they may have to go and change a change a motor in this truck here if uh, the temperature doesn't come down. Eighth start of the season for Stephen Parsons. A couple of top 10 efforts with this team. 
four wheel slot. Oh, yeah. Four wheel slot off turn two there. It doesn't matter how good your truck's handling. When you go qualify, you're just going to try to get every bit of it. And a lot of times you'll see big slides. In the race tonight, you want to avoid those as best you can to take care of those tires for as long as you can. But in qualifying, it's just go for it. That's what's called making those tires mad. Yeah. Stephen Parsons on top of the board with a 2372. Keith McGee up next, the lone driver from Alaska. Guess what Keith did on his couple of weeks off? What'd he do? He went fishing in Alaska, <laughs> which is exactly what I want to do next summer. I've done that. I've done that before. That's going to be a bucket list trip for me. I want to go. I'm going to see if Keith will take me fishing up there. It's got to be incredible. This time of year, beautiful country. Countryside for sure. Keith was able to clock in just behind Trey Hutchins ahead of Bowman in that number 22. 37 trucks here, that means 36 will race. So for a lot of these drivers, as we talked about with Trey Hutchins and, and uh, Jerry Bowman, people like that, 31 is the number. 31 is the key number. If you make the top 31, you're guaranteed making the race no matter what. What about Keith? Picked it up on lap two. Yeah, good job. Good for Keith McGee in the 22. Here's Thad Moffitt in the 46. That's a nice looking safety clean truck, isn't it? It is. She'll be easy to see tonight. Listen to that on the radio this morning. NASCAR Sirius XM talking about this sponsorship with Safety Clean and how important this race is for he and his team. Another gaining, one of the trucks for Tyler Young too, Michael. Yeah, gaining some uh, some momentum with his team. Feels good about this number 46. And darn, you said it, Phil. This thing looks nice. And his grandfather, Richard Petty, waving the green flag tonight. How about that? How cool. It's all in the family. Grand Marshal Richard Petty. Doesn't get much better than that. What do you think that calls him? Graham Poppy? <laughs> Graham Pappy? King. The king, king, king I bet. King. <laughs> king. <laughs> Amanda. Connor Zillich will make his first attempt of qualifying on a short track here in the NASCAR Truck Series. And you said you wanted to take things slow. What did you learn in practice that will help in this qualifying effort? Yeah, um, you know, obviously it's going to be different in qualifying. This place has so much fall off, so I never really got a lap up to speed in practice to really give me a good idea of that. So um, kind of winging it going into qualifying, just go off what I know from the simulator and, you know, what I've talked about with everyone. And uh, hopefully it's good enough to, to put us up front and give us a good shot at it tonight. Congratulations on the announcement this week. What was that? Congratulations on your announcement next week. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Going Xfinity is full time with Dale Jr. That's awesome just to know at this point in the season where you're going, that you have something full time. I looked at his schedule today. He's running in seven different series and he's jumping in and out of cars. He's not running, you know, full time for championships. So next year he'll be able to just focus. I'm sure he'll race something oh, else. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But he'll be locked in for that Xfinity series and he can go for a championship. Yeah, and he'll get his feet wet in the Xfinity series this year. He's already announced that he will run some for Dale Jr. He'll run some more truck races as well for Spire Motorsports. So he's, he's fun to watch. He was fun to watch at Coda, wasn't he? Yeah, he's going to be in our, our ARCA race, our Menard Series race in Michigan next week. Remember, he just turned 18, what, a week or two ago. So now he is eligible to run the bigger tracks. And so we'll we'll see him his first time out in a big track at Michigan next week. His eyes will be big. That'll be by far the biggest track that he's raced, the largest oval anyway. He goes to Mason Massey. By the way, Spencer Boyd had rolled out before him and had fourth on the board. Stephen Parsons, we talked about his engine troubles. He was 35th in practice, and right now he's first. So I talked about how we will learn more about the, the, the direction of this race tonight throughout this qualifying session. Uh, there'll be some surprises. Guys that weren't good in practice will qualify good. I saw Mason on, on social media this week and congratulated his grandfather who beat cancel, right? cancer, rang the bell, oh. cancer-free. That's beautiful. So excited about that. Lawless Allen, number 33. Pretty good lap going. You see him tracking about a tenth and a half now, a couple tenths. Faster than what Stefan ran. He's going to be able to hold it, too. He's going to be a couple tenths faster. He ran a 50, 23.508. Good lap for Lawless Allen. That's a little bit quicker than he ran in practice, but not much. I expect Expect them to get well down into those 22s as we go through this session. I 
Nice job for Lawless Allen. Got to feel good about that effort. Now we'll go make those right adjustments for racing under the lights. Plenty more drivers still to come from Richmond. Brett Holmes, Stuart Friesen in Honeycutt. Welcome back to qualifying from Richmond Raceway as Mason Maggio giving it another go. Had gone out earlier. We had a truck spin on the track. They allowed him to pull it in, cool off that engine, send him back out for another try. It's a little bit of a disadvantage in the fact that uh, he, he put a little bit of time on his tires, but they did have time to cool off a little bit. Didn't have a great practice session earlier. So let's see if they made some improvements to this 21 truck. So he's tracking about eight tenths off. He's going to slot in in seventh so far. He is again 31 on speed. 37 trucks here. That means you have to beat six to lock yourself in. And then it falls back to the owner points, who's positioned where. And as we talked earlier, Trey Hutchins is the most vulnerable in the owner points. 28-11, he picked up a three or four tenths of a second after that practice session, Jamie. So that was a good improvement for Mason. Yeah, Mason Maggio sixth on the board. Amanda. As you guys have discussed, Matt Crafton has raced in every playoff of his career. And uh, to make that happen yet again, that will require a win. Do you have a truck to do it? Uh, we started off, no. We made it a couple changes and made it better. So I'm just going to keep working on it all night. I mean, it's a long race, 250 laps, and that's all we can do. Um, it's all, this depth that we've got ourselves into, it's not all our doing. I mean, we've had so many just gremlins and motors shutting off at St. Louis. Um, just bad, I mean, getting wrecks that aren't our own doing, that aren't, aren't our doing, just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. But at the end of the day, I'm out there holding the steering wheel, and these guys are working on it, and we've got ourselves in this hole, and we got to try like heck to get ourselves out. If there's someone that can do it, is it Matt Crafton, guys? I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it past him. Three-time champion here in this truck series. Yeah, and he knows what he needs. He knows that it wasn't exactly the truck he needed to go win the race with tonight. And he's going to give that team the direction they need in order to make those changes. And he was solid here last year. Remember, finished in the top ten both stages as well at the end of the race. So uh, good run. Certainly a chance. Good run here for Brett Holmes. He'll go to the top of the board. Yeah, he does. 23.41. 27 year old from Munford, Alabama. Able to pick up about four tenths of a second over practice. So yeah, a little bit quicker this lap so far. Lost a little bit uh, there. Went the wrong direction there in the center of three and four. Run over longtime crew chief Mike Shiplett this season. It's made a difference in this young team. Jake Garcia hitting the road. Was that left front smoking? Yeah, it is. I heard from Jake pretty happy with what he had. They're on the board in practice, but it's got a left rubbing the fender, shoot. isn't it? Is yeah. it rubbing the back, the back side of the wheel opening? It looks like weird though that they practiced and we didn't have that problem. I know the pressures are different. That could have something to do with the left front tire pressure. He'll go second quick on lap one. All the fast guys have got it done on the first lap, Phil. Mm -hmm. And I, as a racer that have raced here before, I like. The tires fall off so quickly. I want to get it done on lap one, if at all possible. That's why sometimes you can elect to put more tape on the grill, knowing you're really that first lap is the money lap. If you're going to run two laps, you might have to have a little bit of a grill opening to be able to do that. There's that smoke we're talking about. Just a little tire rub there, I believe. Yeah, a little more tape on the front end, a little more front downforce. Right, a little more speed. A little more speed. That may go away once, you know, once we get in race trim, back in race trim like they were in practice. Good speed again for Garcia. 23-44 is good enough for second. There's Connor Hall in the 91. We talk about the nerves, like somebody like Daniel Dye has. Same situation for Connor Hall making his debut. Pretty solid effort there on lap number one for Connor Hall, second quickest. Yeah, he was solid in practice, too. Top 15 was Connor races in the cars series we hear yeah, leading the points yeah. Kevin Harvick talking about that a lot yeah he's a champion that's his normal gig to come give trucks a try so he's one of two drivers making 
their series debut tonight. He did it. Quicker on lap two. Yeah, he does to the top. Amanda. Tanner Gray just gave me the uh, signal that he's going to get ready and get in his truck ahead of this qualifying session. You guys were talking about the nerves of these bubble drivers, and that's exactly what Tanner Gray told me this morning. Said that he has to be cautiously aggressive tonight, but said that the most important role of his job today is in this qualifying session. That when it comes to racing at Richmond, longevity and track position, position is the keys to winning here. So when you think of the emotion and the nerves that are going through Tanner Gray right now, it is going to be right on his job right now, qualifying in order to find success tonight. Well, Amanda, Tanner Gray is on the bubble. Five points to the good, as you mentioned. Not on the line. That's why we tune in. It's exciting. We don't know who will be in, who will be out. Good lap for Matt Mills to the top of the board. See if he can pick it up on lap number two. He does just a little bit. Actually, it ran a 23-20. Uh, Remember that finished fifth last year here yeah. driving for KBM. Great effort for Matt Mills. Good qualifying too. And here's Stuart Friesen. We talked to him a bit ago and he loved his truck. Said they had a great session in practice. Knows what he has to do. Let's get that victory. Yeah, so we're just going to give it our all. We Oof. No, ooh. Gave it at all, but look at that tracker, Phil. He didn't lose any crown. Never got out of it. Going to be a solid lap here. We'll go to the top of the board. Oh, 23 13. We're inching toward those 22 second lap times. Yeah, I think we're going to get there, don't you? Way, I think we'll see mid at least. Track temperature's hot. The trucks are slipping, but they're getting some speed. Ooh, there's a slide by the back. Can. Yeah. If there's anybody here that's used to being sideways in a race vehicle, it's Stuart Friesen. I'd say over the last three weeks, he's been sideways in a race vehicle about every damn day. <laughs> he just he just loves to go dirt racing. Got himself some extra trophies during this break the last few weeks as well. Timmy Hill's up next. You know, we talked about Tanner Gray and some of these other drivers right around that bubble being nervous here. And, and you mentioned it's been three weeks since we last raced. So they've been thinking about just about nothing besides being close on close to that bubble. So yeah, I guess it's a little bit comforting to finally get here and get in the truck and to know by the end of the night we're going to have to figure it out. It's good looking Toyota Tundra. Timmy Hill, driver from Port Tobacco, Maryland. That is a good looking truck. A little bit of a departure from what we usually yeah. see his trucks. It's mean looking. <laughs> It's all spidery, doesn't it? It does. Timmy was able to pick it up on lap two. We've seen that be a trend lately. Stewart slid off on lap two, but you guys here recently have been able to pick it up. Must be all about just hitting that line perfectly. I expect this young man to show us something tonight. He's so fun. See a lot of speed from Caden Honeycutt. We saw that his best finish this year was fourth at Kansas, and man, he had a shot to win that race. Ran stout the entire evening. Six races, four times finished in the top 10. I feel like we're always talking about him when he's behind the wheel. Somebody sign this young man up. Give him a full-time ride. Straight to the top of the board, too, on lap number one. Uh, Tim of the second. Looks like he's falling off here on lap two somewhat. Ooh, that, a little bit of a bobble there. Led by Phil Gould, who what did he do last year? Went to Victory Lane. Went to Victory Lane with a little strategy. Yeah, he did with Carson Hosevar. We're going to see strategy tonight, don't you think? I think so, especially if we get a green flag run. You know, we've only had seven caution flags the last two years combined. Four of those were for stage in. So we've only had three cautions per cause over the last 500 laps here at this racetrack. Ty Dillon showed us some good speed. Top 10 in practice. Come up a little bit short on lap one. Slots into the fourth position. Rackley roofing on that number 25 truck. As an experienced veteran at this racetrack, many laps. Oh, it got away from a bit there. He's going to stay fourth. 
Plenty more heavy hitters still to go in this qualifying session from Richmond Raceway. Stay with us. That's a launch right there. That's what it feels like to crank your engine, be behind the wheel, and know what you've got ahead of you. Fighting for grip, battling to get that gas down and keep those rear tires underneath you. Well, Amanda had talked about Daniel Dye and the nerves he was feeling for this day, for this event, knowing that he can race his way into the championship. As it stands, five points below the cutoff. He just keeps doing what this team has been able to do over the last month or so. I think they'll be good. He knows what he's up against. It's right there. 23-14. Jumps up to third. He can taste that playoff berth. Been a great start to the season anyway, no matter what happens tonight for Daniel Dye. Good return to the gas there. I like the way that truck stuck. But Good lap, just about the same as he ran on the first lap, just a couple hundreds difference. Well, that's not the way you come to the green, I don't think. Maybe that was a plan, Connor Zilich. A little high. See if he can duck it down here in turns one. Still missing the bottom. You see it's reflected, too, in the tracker. He was within about a half a tenth, and then we missed the bottom down there. You see now he's over four tenths off. But you know he's going to be able to learn every lap, Bill. He's been so impressive watching him get his legs under him in the truck series. See if he can make an improvement here on lap two. We've seen other drivers pick it up on lap two. Definitely a better corner than the first time. Still missed it a bit, though. Yeah. This is going to be definitely going to be an improvement if he can just get off a of four here. just a bit. Connor Zilich, 23-54, good enough for 11th right now. Amanda, let's hear from his teammate, Raja Karu. Yeah, you wanted to watch Connor uh, qualify there before getting in, and Raja, effectively, your playoff pressure has been off since your first win in Vegas. How much will that reset for you tomorrow? I've been reset. I've been reset since then. So I'm really proud of our uh, AndrewCars.com Silverado team, and Super proud of everybody at Spire and Team Chevy. So hopefully we can have a good night today. You know, it's my home racetrack. I went to my first race 10 years ago, almost to the day. Uh, so hopefully we have a good one for Mr. H and Mr. Miss Linda and everybody supports us. Yeah, Jamie, I'd really love to see Raja in this paddock. He's been one of those guys that's been kind of that teammate in and around just his team as well. He was one of the guys that was also giving that pep talk to Daniel Dye earlier. It's got to be a relief to have that win and know he's not in this situation of must win to go through. He said he's already turned that page. Yeah, months ago. Months ago he got that win. 88 to Matt Crafton. Solid lap for Matt. Yeah. Up in the top five so far. See if he can hang in there. Bailey Curry in the 41 truck. Wally Rogers now is calling the shots on this 41 truck for Bailey Curry. Made a bit of a change since we last raced. While he's worked with this team and Nice as a crew chief and different roles, part-time crew chief for the most part, but now he's over here full-time. I, I think that'll make a, a nice improvement. Sometimes change is really all the team needs. Yeah, while he was doing the 44 truck, the fourth truck, when they would run it, they would only run it on occasion. And they moved him over here full-time on the 41. Tom Ackerman will now be the crew chief when they run that 44 truck. And Bailey's one of those guys you just think he's right there, you know, could click off some top 10 finishes, can be in the hunt. He's shown good speed, and he shows good speed here. A good lap there on lap two is able to pick it up and uh, a couple of tenths. Here's the fastest guy from practice, Ben Rhodes, to see if he can back it up. Remember, practice speed was 22.685 was his quick lap in practice. 
He's not there. Not going to get there on this lap for sure. I think the tractor slowed down. It just keeps getting hotter. He's stampeding, but he's not stampeding <laughs> like he did earlier. Nashville Stampede is a bull riding team. They're team champions, actually. PBR. Those guys have got it. a lot going on, don't they? Yeah. Wow. I, th I think this track is considerably slower than what it was for practice. That's going to throw some curves. We talked about this session, you know, will we get more answers than questions? Well, I'm beginning to wonder, Phil, because, man, that's, you know, the fastest time is almost a half second off what we saw earlier, and that was in race trim. Yeah, Ben Rhodes was a, definitely a half a second off what he ran for the fastest practice speed. See Rhodes there second overall, but we've got a lot of fast trucks still to come. Ooh. Oh, he had a great turn entry into one. Got it through the center, it looked like. Just couldn't get the gas down on the way off. We heard him pedal that throttle. Yeah, look at those hands. You're just constantly fighting. It's like a battle between your hands and your feet. You want to get your foot down so the truck will go, but then the tires slip and your hands get busy. Definitely a technical racetrack. I don't know. Ooh. You saw I had to grab a little bit more steering wheel there as well. 14th quickest on lap number one for Tanner Gray. Now, when you go into turn three and it's a left and you turn right, that's, that's not good. That's right? not good. I mean, you're not supposed to do that. No. Good. He's even slower on lap two. That's a struggle right there. William Sawalich, 17-year-old out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota, making his fourth start this season. Five wins and eight starts in the Arkham Menard Series this year for William Sawalich. Had some really good battles with Counter Zilich in the Arkham Menard series. Counter Zilich is three for three in the Arkham Menard series. Three starts, three wins this year. I hope to see them together side by side on the track tonight because what a battle that'll be. These are the future stars, Bill. We're going to be talking about these two for a long time to come. Top of the board, too, for William Sawalich. You know, Phil, how we talked about uh, the times being off, that's a half a second faster than he ran in practice. So everybody's learning as they go. We know we know William doesn't have a whole lot of laps, but uh, he was a lot better in this qualifying session than he was earlier today. Some nice cloud cover right now for him on this run. And that makes a huge difference. He, almost immediately, too, isn't Michael? That's right, Chase Purdy's. As a racer, you're just looking up at that sky when you're waiting for your turn to go. <laughs> Please slide in here, Clouds. We'd really love to have you visit. Oh, sideways off two. I failed to mention that Chase is another car out of the Spire Motorsports shop, along with the teammates of Raja Karuth and quasi teammate Nick Sanchez and Connor Hall. I'm not Connor Hall, excuse me. Connor Smith. Hey, we've Connor got Zillich. three Connors. Connor, it was definitely field. Connor. Yeah, I got I got half of it right. <laughs> you did. Chase Birdie, one of his best efforts, just a couple of races to go uh, ago at Pocono. Finished sixth there. See Purdy with 23 to 23. Moves it up to 10th. Yeah, he was 11th after lap one. Picked it up a little bit. Who's a young man that's had an outstanding year. Brought Jeff Hensley on board to call the shots. And uh, will, will lock himself into the playoffs here tonight. How exciting for this young man. Last year, obviously, didn't run all the races, so didn't have a chance to put himself in position to make it to the championship run. This is solid. Just off one of his teammates, William Sawalich, by about a hundredth of a second. Looked like a really good handling truck, too. You know, not a lot of slipping and sliding. He decides to bail. I think he's good. Taylor Gray, second on the board. Corey Heim. He's battling for something big tonight, going up against Christian Eckes. Battling for the regular season championship and those bonus points. Welcome back to Craftsman Truck Series qualifying. Dean Thompson in the five truck on track. Those Tricon garage trucks have been pretty racy so far. Yeah, front row right now with Sawalich and Taylor Gray. Another good handling truck. It looked like the one and two for Dean. Did a nice job down there. He's tracking 
Just about a tenth of a second off, losing a little bit more in three and four. He was in the green getting in turn three, maybe overshot it just a little bit, possibly. It's so easy to do. You talk about the lack of grip and the slipping and sliding. I'd rather have my driver overshoot it than underdo it, and I think that was the case there in turn three and four. See if he can rally here on lap two. Learned a little bit of something maybe in one and, oh, there it goes again. Had a good lap going again until he got to three and four. He had two, two, three, two laps, three quarters of them both good. Team Thompson, seventh. It's Lane Riggs in the 38 team. Top five last time out on the short track in Indiana. Was Lane, see if he can sit this thing on the provisional pole. Looking pretty good through one and two. Good exit. In the green, see if he can get into turn three here. He did not overdrive it, and I think that's going to pay dividends, Michael. Right there. Yes. In the, the top. Into the 22. 22.993. Comfortably in the 22s. Yeah, I knew they would go in the 22. <laughs> Richmond is certainly in Lane's wheelhouse. This is one team I circle as somebody to watch. I mean, he's learning so quickly this year and the improvement, but when we go short track racing, this is where he's comfortable. Yeah, Zane Smith finished third in this truck last year. 22.94, a little bit quicker on lap two. Picked it up on lap two, about half a tenth. There he is, Corey Heim, five-time winner on the season already. No poles. That's unbelievable. Just kind of their strategy, I guess. The way they set their trucks up, they don't put a lot of emphasis on being the fastest in qualifying, but they want to be the fastest in race. I don't know. It's going to be a solid lap. It might not be a pole wing lap, but it's going to be pretty solid here for Corey Heim. Third quickest. I think he can get there from there. Only, what, less than a tenth of a second off. Really solid exit there off two. Corey is 23rd in practice. He's going to stay third, it looks like. Still a good effort for Corey Heim. See what Nick Sanchez can do. We saw his practice was a struggle. He was outside the top 30. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Guy that, one of the better qualifiers that we have in the series. A guy like this that you know set on the pole that tells you how competitive the truck series is just a little bit off you'll find yourself behind a lot of trucks he's not going to be in the 30s after this qualifying session sixth quickest on lap one for nick Set in practice just couldn't get that truck to do what he wanted it to do he's closer now certainly is These guys know that this track is going to continue to evolve and change as the sun begins to set. They'll take all the information they learn in this qualifying session and report to the crew and see what kind of direction they can have tonight. Raja Karuth talked about him solidifying his playoff berth way earlier in the season at Las Vegas with that big win from the pole. What a race that was for him. Just a little high in one and two there on that lap. Didn't wrap that bottom like I think you need to in order to be taking advantage of all the grip. See if he can get a little lower here on this lap. Remember he said almost 10 years to the day since he came to his first race right here at Richmond. He's from Washington, D.C. He has these pictures, adorable, of him as a race fan. If he only knew then that he'd be here racing himself in just a matter of years. So Raja Karu, 12th quickest. Solid season for Tyler Ankrum. Moved over to McAnally Hilgeman. Already locked his way into the playoffs. Solid regular season. Last race at IRP, locked himself in. That's the first time that he'll uh, be racing in the playoffs since 2020. Looked like he got into one a little heavy. He saw some green as he got there, and then it went away. This looks better, wrapping that bottom real tight there. And look at that speed on the back. Yeah, good corner. Mm -hmm. And you have two more good corners to get that 
truck up first. Ooh, slipping and sliding. Picks up quite nicely. Inside the top ten. They picked up a full tenth of a second on lap two. Keep your eye on number nine tonight. Grant Enfinger is really good here. It's been so fun to watch this team and its progression throughout the season. Yeah, just like Ankrum locked himself into the playoffs with IRP last time out. Pretty darn good lap going here, too. Staying in the green up off the corner. Finger looking for his first pole of the year. He goes to the top, the 22.88. Now we're getting down there, Michael, back <laughs> in the range where we thought we were going to get. Lane says, oh, man. Knocked him off, so Riggs settles in the second spot. That truck looks so good. Two more to go here after Grant. His second lap's not going to be quite what he did on lap number one, but good job by Grant Enfinger and his guys. Christian Eckes, regular season point leader by 50 points. Didn't love the number 19 truck in practice. Said it wouldn't turn in the center like he wanted it to. It's turning good now. Look at that speed right now. Going to be clear of a tenth of a second at least on Enfinger, it looks like. To the top. 2.75. That's within a tenth of a second of what we saw for our fastest lap in practice that we were so worried about getting there. Yeah. Maybe this track hadn't changed that much, Phil. I don't know. Well, the cloud cover came in. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it was last 10 trucks. That's right. It really just changed things for us. <laughs> Look, it's sunny now. Not on this end. I think this is the catch you're going to have to beat. See if Majeski can do anything with that lap put on the board by Christian Eckes. So solid here a year ago when both stages dominated lead. 168 laps of 250. Sped on pit road. That's one that got away from Had to go to the back of the pack and drove his way up to second. And then they elected to stay out when others came to pit road for fresh tires under green and got caught with four laps to go by Carson Hosobar. Second for Majeski on lap number one. We had our our shoes off, counting our toes, trying to figure out if he had enough laps to get there. Was all the math we could could figure could could Carson get there, and darned if he didn't, just with three or four laps to go. And that's it. Christian Eckes is your pole sitter for Richmond Raceway. Stay with us. We'll hear from him after this. Well, I imagine Christian Eckes has a smile on his face now. Wasn't so sure about the truck in practice, but it was fast enough. Second pole of the season for Eckes in that 19 team. Ty Majeski in the 98 will start outside front row. Coverage of the Craftsman Truck Series race live from Richmond Raceway coming up 7.30 Eastern right here on FS1. MLB on FS1 coming up next. We'll send it to Mike Hill in the studio.